Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. And we are sharing with you live looks from different areas of Jamaica as the uh, island nation is preparing ahead of a category for Hurricane Barrel. Uh, for more on that, we want to head to Michael Brennan, who is the director of the National Hurricane Center, for more on the very latest. Uh, Michael, what's the latest in the path of Barrel? Yeah, well, Barrel right now is centered just a, you know about 100 miles to the southeast of Kingston now, moving quickly to the west-northwest, but that's the center of the storm, and you can already see showers and thunderstorms, rain moving on to the coast of Jamaica. We, you know, Data from the aircraft suggests we've got tropical storm conditions now nearing the uh, southeastern tip of Jamaica, so conditions are going to deteriorate very rapidly over the next few hours, and we're in particular very concerned about not just the winds of a Category 4 hurricane moving across the island, could this even see higher winds and some of the higher elevation, very heavy rainfall, but we're very concerned about the potential for six to nine feet of storm surge above ground level in some of these bays and harbors on the south side of the island, places near Kingston and just to the west, where we could see a life-threatening storm surge with very dangerous breaking waves on top of that. As we really get into the specifics of the timeline, when do you expect Jamaica to really feel the brunt of this storm today? Well, it's going to be in the next few hours. You know, the, the center is going to pass near or over the southern portion of the island, uh, maybe late this morning, early this afternoon. So, and that's going to bring the core of that hurricane uh, over the island today. So it's going to be in the next, you know, six to 12 hours that they're going to see the worst conditions there. And of course, as, as hurricanes continue to develop it and continue to uh, move, the forecasts may change slightly. When you're taking a look at the very latest models, has there been any changes to the path of the storm? Not really for the first couple of days. We expect the center to move near or over Jamaica today and near or just south of the Cayman Islands tonight and early Thursday, and then move over the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico Thursday night and Friday, and then emerge into the southern Gulf of Mexico over the weekend, and then perhaps a northward turn that could threaten northeastern Mexico and Texas as we get from Sunday into Monday. Um, still a lot of uncertainty that far out in the forecast four or five days from now. But folks along the Gulf Coast, especially in Texas, you think we're going into a holiday weekend, people may unplug and sort of disconnect. You want to make sure you're checking in, uh, you know, at least a couple times a day for updates to the forecast. Be on the lookout for any watches or warnings that might be issued as we go through the next couple of days. I want to go back in time now, Michael, because uh, Eastern Caribbean islands are now cleaning up from the devastation yeah. left behind by Barrel. We know that there have been at least uh, six reported deaths because of the storm. As the National Hurricane Center takes a look at the data, takes a look at the damage and the devastation left behind, uh, what, what can you glean from that? Well, you know, we're still dealing with the storm now. So we, we go back and we do a, a pretty thorough post analysis of every storm, but that's going to have to wait until after we get through the threat that Barrel still poses to Jamaica downstream into the Gulf of Mexico over the next several days. And it can take weeks and even months to gather all the data in terms of the impacts, the meteorological data, and do that post analysis. But we will get that done as we get through the rest of this season and into the off season next year. I also want to talk about the different categories of storms. We hear Cat 5, we hear Cat 4. Cat 5, obviously incredibly powerful. Barrel now downgraded to a Cat 4. For folks perhaps unfamiliar with these terms, when we hear Cat 5, Cat 4, Cat 3, can you break down the impact and just uh, the, the significance, the power of these storms so people hearing these phrases can really hone in on the potential impact? Yeah, the category in the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale gets to the potential for wind damage. It's really a wind damage scale associated with the peak winds of the hurricane. So category four and five, you're up into sort of catastrophic damage. If you've seen some of the damage on Cariacou, Petite Martinique that uh, that barrel brought as a you know as powerful category four hurricane, you know, roofs ripped off of homes, significant structural damage, trees knocked completely down. That's the kind of damage you get on the category four or five storms. Category three, still devastating uh, impacts, you know, from the, from the wind, but that's just the wind. It doesn't get into things like storm surge, the potential for rainfall flooding, and it's the water hazards that tend to kill the most people in tropical storms and hurricanes. So we try to keep the focus on those in addition to the, the dangerous impacts from uh, the winds when you get up into those major hurricane categories. Michael, you bring up a very important point because flooding is 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 absolutely devastating, one of, one of the worst scenarios. And even as a barrel makes its way, perhaps into the Gulf being downgraded, there are 
but folks still really need to pay attention, really need to take this seriously. So I appreciate you bringing that to your our attention. Anything else that you really are focusing on right now as you continue to track the storm? Yeah, we just want people to focus on the impacts. We don't really want people to focus on the category or just how strong the winds are. You know, Barrel is a powerful hurricane. It's been a powerful hurricane for days. So even as those peak winds might start to come down, this storm is not going anywhere. It's going to continue to bring multiple life-threatening hazards to Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Yucatan, potentially downstream into Mexico, parts of Texas as we go through the weekend and into early next week. So just keep checking back on the forecast. Be on the lookout for watches and warnings issued for your area and make sure you find your trusted sources of information as we go through the week and into the weekend so that you can keep uh, up with the latest and, and always come to the Hurricane Center at hurricanes.gov. We've got the latest information for you here. All right, Michael, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thanks.